the challenge here is that the stage is kind of set, literally, and that man has done everything that man can do uh, to make this successful. And man can actually do this part. What, what no man can do is actually transform a human heart. And so I want to invite you before I get even going here that this is, this would be a horrible waste if you guys just get more information and entertained because this all was done in alignment with the kingdom of Jesus in that our goal is not to break you or train you uh, or manipulate you. Our goal is to make connection. And so this is Holy Spirit's invitation to say, will you allow me to come close to you so that we can, we can have an interaction today that's not just about words and it's not just about imagery. It's about what it is that the spirit that God poured out over humanity gets to come and invade your space. So if you're willing, hold your hands out like you're gonna get a gift. I know some of your visitors here are like, what is this weird stuff? It's just, it's, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. Say, Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do in me. Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do in me. That's such a beautiful thing. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> well, I'm going to introduce myself to him. And from what I've seen already, he's way more encouraged by the horses that were on the screen. This is his first time seeing television. I, I love first times. And this is his first time to be in church. And first time ever seeing me. But it, because he's been around people, he was raised with like a belief system. And his belief system is the only thing that he knows what to do with. And then on top of that, he's got instincts. And his instincts are gonna be to either fight or, or run. I don't want him to fight. I already told you why. He's bigger than me. But if I can get enough confidence in him that by me asking him to move, that he's starting to ask me some questions. And if you'll notice his left ear, it's pointed right at me. That means that he's watching me out of that ear, but he's still looking at everything else around him while he's moving. So if I was gonna say that there's anything wrong with this horse, is that he has no idea what it is that I see when I look at him. He doesn't understand that he was created for something so much more than what he's done. Got a boy. Got a boy. Got a boy. Bowing his head, licking his lips, looking at me with both eyes. He's all ways of him saying, yes to me and his yes is a distant yes because he doesn't know what all comes with saying yes to me yet I'm going to move him around here a little bit and what I'm going for is that when there's a transition in our lives it's like we got to figure out which way to turn that was a good turn Oh, maybe because he's looking at the horses. I thought I just did something really good. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, well, that was good. <laughs> I know. He can't hear you. I'm sorry. It's beautiful. Like, this is his instinct. His instinct is to be in a herd. He wants to be with other horses. And, and it's beautiful. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But right now, it's in his way. We can't look to other people to, to do this part. This is what man can't do. This is what his 
heard can't provide him is this brand new perspective and power that I want to give him. So while he's making his transitions, I'm wanting him to turn towards me, not away from me. pretty distracted by by the TVs and Brian said you know that this stuff isn't bothering him of course it's bothering him like it's different but it's not mean it's not cruel it's not a lack of kindness this might be the most generous act that this horse ever encounters in his entire life because not everybody is has the same vision when they're interacting with a horse. They're trying to get it to do what they want it to do. And it's good that there's distraction around him because he's finding that things look a little bit chaotic on the outside. But when he looks at me, he finds a strange peace that he's still afraid of. But just because it's scary doesn't mean that he's gonna live with fear because there's gonna be a lot of things that I hope that we're able to do in the next 40 minutes that of course it's scary because it's brand new. And ultimately I'm gonna ask him to do something that all of his instincts are gonna go against. And right now whatever level of trust people have established with him He's got his boundary here, like this is as close as he wants me to be. But I can't do much from here. And I think there's a whole generation of people that have got a form of godliness, but they've denied the power within it. And it's that you believe in God, good. The Bible says even the demons believe in God. It's what it is that you're believing about him and what it is that you believe that he believes about you. Because if this horse knew what I believed about him, he would run to me. And eventually, as we communicate, if he's gonna let me touch him, he's gonna find that there is nothing but love. There's nothing but power. There's nothing but freedom that's being offered to him.
They can't hear you. I hope it's as obvious to you guys as it is to me that he's kind of got his mind made up for a minute that I'd rather run than deal with the pressure I feel of like submitting to something that I don't understand. And it's okay, like I'm not mad at him for it. I want to give him some extra encouragement because once he feels me, his whole world will change. And he's going to understand that this life that he's been invited to is a life of adventure that has so much reward in it. I think some people have got this idea that Christianity is somehow this tame lifestyle of following the rules and being a good boy and minding your manners and the world is going crazy. And we're the ones that get to carry the revelation of the goodness of God and the power of God. That all the things that we're running from and all the things that are putting pressure on us, the, the fear tactics, the inability to know who to trust, who to believe, like it's so real, but it's all lies. And just because it's a lie doesn't make it lose its power until you know what the truth is. Oh no. Oh, that just screwed the whole deal up. I rope myself. I can't rope anything. My wife makes fun of me all the time because how in the heck did I do that? Good Lord. I'm sorry. I just totally messed that up. And that could be a big deal breaker, by the way. This is a super, you're walking on a really fine line with, with, with this because I don't want to force him, yet I've got to challenge him. Otherwise, he's going to stay locked up in this place of fear that he may never recover from. I'll try this side, but remember what you just did to me. I'm going to blame you. That drug me around by my foot. One more try, huh? I know. So there's so much attention on him that he's just sitting there wondering, how do I get away from this pressure? What did I do wrong? Why am I here? I think my kids feel like that when I call a family meeting. But it's okay. So because of the beauty of your pastor and his wife, they love adventures, you know. This is Brian's dream, that we get a horse that bucks me off and is wild enough to make it to where there's not going to be any question in anybody's mind. We're starting with nothing but raw power and fear and instinct. He doesn't know anything. But he's smart. <laughs> it's okay, son. Peace. Shalom. You're loved. I'm not going to take anything from you.
I don't even know what to say. I, you're so cool. Like, so powerful. You are built to lead. You're only going to lead if you know how to be led. There's a way of doing this, son. I want you to be free to do it. Remember I told you what I need to do? <laughs> I just reminded myself. I'm starting to get anxious. Thank you, Father. You deserve so much. There's been a price paid for you. And it was for something a whole lot more than this. Take it back. 
these gifts that Jesus just comes and it's like he increases our capacity to believe, he increases our capacity to love and tools that make it to where if I can just help him understand where to look. <laughs> at some point. Well, I don't know. We got a German shepherd that's been barking at himself for 10 years. And he still runs around behind the mirror trying to figure out where that bugger keeps going. So maybe we won't get that figured out. But the attention, the nod, everything that he's saying to me is that I want to be close to you. I don't even know how to. Like I've never done that part before. What does it look like for me to have oneness with something that I don't understand? In fact, is a lot of my experience has been that I can't trust you. Because of every other interaction that I've had has made it to where It hurts, like I'm just hurt and restricted, told what to do. Authority is always just something that's mean. It's a good boy. So he's convinced of my power. He's convinced that I'm here. This entire side of his body See how he's putting his head on this side of me? It's like he's forcing his weight. I gotta get back to what I'm, what I'm comfortable with. I think it'd be cruel as me as a father to let him live with half of his life in fear. It's not cruelty, it's kindness that says, we can't stay locked, I understand why you're afraid, we're just not gonna stay there. When Jesus said he came to set us free, He's made it to where we're not afraid of anything in life or even death itself. Where the things that we don't know, I don't have to understand them before I can just say, it is your goodness, God, that keeps me. When everything around me is falling apart, we'll do it. It's good. You did really good. that our Father's kindness and the patience and knowing that everybody grows at a different rate and there's, it's okay. We can't keep comparing ourselves to each other. In fact, as Jesus addressed a demonic aspect of, of religious people that have judged themselves by each other, they're comparing themselves one to another. And I think that we ought to be done with that today. Because I don't know who you're comparing yourself to. I don't know why it is that you see yourself as either better than everybody else or you see yourself as a poser or a failure. But I don't know what you're comparing yourself to, but I know that there's a liar out there that is still speaking lies into the hearts of humanity that's causing all this distortion where you can't even hear the truth anymore. And I'm here to say it again with everything that I have, that this is our Father's good pleasure, is to give us good gifts, to give us the kingdom, that He delights in giving us things that we don't even understand, but He wants us to be able to hold that power. He doesn't give power to things that's gonna hurt themselves with it. I wanna give Him something that's so much more than the ability to do what He wants to do. So because leadership has always been poorly modeled to him, I want him to decide what he's gonna do with me. Because if he knows that I'm gentle and that I'm kind, he's never had anybody in this position before. So a really good friend of mine, <clears throat> Bull Rider, had a horrible accident and had his head stepped on and changed his life but in a lot of ways it healed parts of him that may have never been healed but the good part of it for me was his head got too big for his hat 
So I got his hat. So this is a special hat to me that he's chewing on. But it's good because this discovery, like a child right now, he's, he's enjoying getting to know. He's enjoying the process of, I don't understand any of this. I just know that there's something about you that I want to know. And I just think that Jesus modeled this lifestyle and taught his followers to do the same, is that we carry something that, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but you carry the kingdom of heaven within you. And when Jesus said that we would pray that his kingdom would come and his will would be done on earth the same way it's being done in heaven, that's not a city or a building or a destination. It's what we're experiencing in humanity and we've seen where it's gone wrong, but let's see where it's going right. You all are here in this building desiring this one thing. I want to see Jesus get whatever he paid for. And it was to have a family that was filled with his spirit and his power and his presence. And they reflect who he is. might have some control issues. So because in horsemanship, um, kind of have to have the idea that there can really actually be one leader, but that doesn't mean that there's only one powerful person in the room. So this early on, why would it, I don't need to discipline him for crowding my space stepping on my toes, putting me in a corner. Now, my insecurities a lot of times get triggered in these type of moments, especially in family settings. This is what we're learning to do better, is that if someone's just gonna take us and override our authority, try to push their way, it looks like disobedience, but part of it right now is it just doesn't trust me enough to do it a different way. I'm going to have to earn the trust. What I want to do is just step on his back now. I don't know how good of an idea that is. But since you gave me the step stool, 
How do you like them bananas? Okay, remember the right side is still like an unfamiliar space to him. And he's looking at me from there. This is a surrender of a new, whole new aspect of his life. And I don't know where you're at in the, what this looks like in intimacy with Jesus and what you trust him with. But this is against his nature. Human nature says, I want to do it my way. I want to have the answers. I want to be in control. I don't want people telling me what to do. We don't have to learn that. That's human nature. It's pride. But it's, it's not punishable. I don't think. Because the way Jesus said it, he says, wherever there's punishment, there's fear of torment. So I, I want to correct her, him, him. I want to correct him and teach him, but all I know right at this point is he doesn't trust me enough to, to be corrected. Not in the way that people would think he should be corrected. But I want to let him move a little bit because Turn the way you want to turn. How's that? Wow. Have you ever seen a horse tiptoe? He's carrying the, pre the presence that he was running from. And although there's a whole lot of things for him to discover, and because of instinct and past experiences. And this could go the other direction pretty quick. Wow. I actually didn't think I'd get on him. But I'd love for you to see progress even if it's momentary but consider what's happened in the last 30 minutes and was it a horse trick was it manipulation was it fear I'll let you decide what it was but to me this is the only way I know to lead mm, that's not true this is the only way to lead And in my interactions with my wife and my family and those that are under my care, it's, it's that much more important. Because huh. the lack of consistency that I've had in my own home has created its own kind of fear of what, what version of, of dad is going to show up or what version of husband is going to show up. And so because I'm talking about people relationships, you know, there's just got to be love and grace on both sides. But the goodness of God is going so far beyond that, where he hasn't waited for me to do anything other than just say yes. And in the process, man, I'll wait forever. Like this is just how good God is. The perfect love casts out all fear. And I'm not saying that he's not still scared. Like, it's okay that he's scared of some stuff. Still has a lot of questions. It's the only thing that activates courage. So now it's his courage that's making it to where even though I don't know and I don't understand, I want to trust you. I 
I wish I could put in words what a miracle you guys are experiencing right now. A horse this powerful, this strong, this flighty, this, you know, avoiding even being touched to allow this level of connection. In fact, is he initiated it, right? We get to blame him for this. He's like, hey, come on up here, son. And there is a whole bunch of people in this building. I'm not gonna wait till the end. Right now, you need a miracle. I've prayed with so many people over the last 24 hours that are in hopeless situations. Their marriage is not gonna make it unless they get a miracle. Their health is not gonna make it unless they get a miracle. All the things that they've got confidence in, their security in is falling apart and they need a miracle. Like, man can't do that part. But all we can do is say, like we were in the beginning, Holy Spirit, you can do anything in me that you wanna do. I hope that you realize that what he wants to do is have connection, oneness with you. In the book of John, he's talking about how Jesus only did the things that he sees the Father doing. And how the same way that Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in Jesus that Jesus looked at us and he said in the same way, I am in you and you are in me. It's not a relationship with Jesus that we're going for and it's definitely not religion. The whole point of the story was that we, we would be one. We would have oneness with God. I don't know what accelerated growth looks like, but if oneness can create this, then I think that every one of us need to make a decision before we walk out these doors. Are we living on a belief system that comes and goes and it's only based on our own understandings? Or is it this type of oneness that says that I've become one with the one that knows the vision, that knows what my DNA has to do with my future and my destiny. You guys remember this side it's not a small deal it's like some people live a double life where they some people call them hypocrites but I don't I don't know that it's always that it's their one thing in one setting and there's somebody completely different in another and I'm not talking about the fact that some well, most times I'm better in public than I am in person <laughs> I don't know why that is but it's not because I'm a hypocrite. It's just 
my wife could probably explain it different. Um, I'm talking about having a hidden life, things that you're ashamed of. And I still can't hear you. The, the kind of divided life that makes it to where you're living in fear because if you get found out, it might crumble your home or it might destroy your business, or your reputation, or it just might be just flat embarrassing. He can't hide this side and have oneness with me. Look at what he's doing. I didn't ask him to do that. By himself, he's saying, I give this part of myself to you. I'm trusting you with this. This is the scariest part of my life. Will you come into this place so that I don't have to carry this fear and then pretend like I'm, everything's okay? That's not the freedom that Jesus purchased. And when we have, we've been conditioned to be punished for that stuff. And we think that if we actually start talking to somebody about it, that that's gonna be the, the end of it. It's actually the beginning. that Jesus gave and that's is it okay if I don't know what to say sometimes I'd refer to my notes if I had them but he's really uh, surprising on so many levels and I don't know when I'm gonna ever get over the amazement of what can happen and if he'll let me on him again I think we can have a different conversation. Yes, I know this life I live is not my own. And eternity with you will be my own. But until
Jesus' disciples had a lot of experiences with Jesus that made it to where they would were just fascinated by, well, I don't know what you call it, fascinated is probably not the right word. They watched him raise the dead. This is a guy that they're walking around with and multiply food and walk on water and cleanse leopards and lepers. And with all these things that Jesus could do, there came a time when everybody was leaving Jesus. He had made some statements that people didn't understand. He was speaking of heavenly things and it sounded weird. And so everybody started leaving and he asked his disciples, are you gonna leave too? And they said, where else would we go? Like, you're the only one that has the words of life. And I'm thinking that of all the things that Jesus did, they said, the reason I'm staying is because when you speak, something comes alive in me. And then Jesus like goes away. And he said, stay here until I send my spirit. And when the spirit comes, he's gonna fill you with power. And you're gonna get to do what I do. Greater things are you gonna do than I was able to do or than what I did. That's confusing to a lot of people until you get this revelation of what it meant, that what was it that kept those men and women was that he's given me his words. Not just repeating scripture, but it's us using our language in a way that people literally can feel your love and your care and your encouragement, even if it's, even if it's hard to understand, it's hard to listen to. But when it's coming from a pure heart that desires nothing but the best from it, you get to carry around the words of life. And everybody around you benefits from it. find him relaxed with all that's gone on like isn't this what we want like, where's the peace where do I find this joy because he's gonna find a ton of joy when we build enough trust and enough experience with each other that he's not gonna be afraid to run and when he runs nothing can stop him like, who can stand against you? Even demons can't stop you. There's nothing in the heavens or on earth that can interrupt this oneness that you have with the love of God. Nothing high, nothing low, nothing seen or un unseen could ever separate you from this oneness that you get to carry. And it's not something that's just out in front of you like a vision or like following Jesus and talking to him as though he's far off. You see what he sees. And so when you look at the world, you don't see just broken humanity. You don't see all the wars and the rumors of wars. We're, we're the people that he entrusted with this time in, in the history of a planet and lets us lead. So whatever you're doing, that we get to do it carrying this same power. Because now he's got my vision, not literally, but as we grow in this oneness together, everywhere he goes is carrying my vision. I'm with him in it. He's seeing what I see. But first of all, he had to see what I see. Because when he, he didn't see himself the right way when we started. Mm. 
although we look in a mirror dimly, what it is that he sees. It's not super clear, but when he gets to see it, he's going to behold the glory of God. That's a word for somebody. I don't know what's going to happen with you looking in the mirror next time. But I'm believing for supernatural eyes to see yourself in a way that you actually see the glory of God that's within you. It's not just a physical appearance that you're examining in a mirror. It's not just the works and the deeds that you do that you're examining yourself by. But you're seeing what God sees. And I just declare over this whole house in this season that you're in that every one of you get to see yourself the way God sees you. Amen. Okay, I'd love Brian to come up and chat with the family. I've seen, uh, I don't know, about 10 of these so far, something like that over the years, about 10 of them. And uh, this is definitely the, the uh, oddest one. Uh, you know, zero to 60, faster than any of them. You went a longer time, the beginning, with him not even allowing you to touch him. It, it doesn't, I have not seen it take that long. And then immediately able to get on his back. I mean, that turnaround, unless you've seen it have context for it, was really, really stunning. It made me think of, that's the way some people I know who, who walk with Christ. Like, for the longest period, no God. I don't want anything to do with God. No, no, no. Can't trust. Don't believe that. No, no, no. But then for some, it's like a, there's a flip. There's a switch that, whoosh, that comes around. And some of the most ardent followers of Christ are very free with the ones who are the most cynical and skeptical in the very, very early years. And then you have some who are, you know, church-going types, know enough about the Bible to be inoculated to true transformation. And they just kind of meander around, and they're nice, and you can touch them and all that stuff, but they don't really go anywhere with power. I think God is not as intimidated as you think by some of our standoffish ways. He's patient, waiting for the turnaround and waiting for the power to kick in. Jesus says in John 8, 32, the truth will set you free. Truth is God loves you. That's the truth. The truth is he has more patience for you than you think that he does. He is a disciplinarian and he loves and he's patient. You can be both of those things. Maybe you've never received that God in your life. Maybe you've never received that Jesus in your life. He'd love you to receive him right now. You can do that right now. Or maybe you want to say to God, sorry for ignoring your love for me. I've been too hard hard to, towards your love and I've just not given you your due. In any of those situations, I'll give you prayer right now and you can pray after me if you want and then we're going to stand and sing together. It goes something like this. Jesus, I want you in my life. I want your tenderness. I want your mercy. And I ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me for my hard heartedness. Forgive me for my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I will follow you the rest of my life. And I'm sorry for not understanding you. I pray these things for in the name of Jesus. Amen.